Boo, and welcome to RNN's pre-Halloween special, the second scariest news show right behind the Situation Room with Wolf Blitzer. I'm Anthony Ross, because my Iceland costume didn't show up in time. And I'm an octopus. Making my way downtown, walking fast, faces pass and I'm homebound. We begin tonight by mourning the loss of one of our own, Paul, the German octopus who correctly predicted the winner of seven World Cup final games, has died at the age of two from something that causes octopuses to die. Okay. Paul was hatched in England, one of several hundred thousand brothers and sisters. He would go on to work at Sea Life Centers in Oberhausen, Germany for the rest of his life. He was so technically. It's okay. We all miss him. He may have just been a common octopus, but to me, he was an extraordinary octopus. It's all right. We'll get through this together. And nothing bridges people together quite like sports. We now turn it over to literally like the sixth person to be a sports anchor in the past year, and hopefully the last, Ryan Thomas. Hello, my name's Ryan Thomas, and I'm not talented whatsoever, but I'm better than Michaela Vasquez at reporting sports. So how about those sports? Rebel football has had a great season, and our last game is against Curvallis at their place, unfortunately. But if you've ever seen the movie 300 or played Halo Reach, you know that the Spartans lose every time. That's it. I'm done. Yeah, I know. I am making a broad assumption that girls soccer won on Tuesday. But because of filming purposes, we are currently filming this on Tuesday. So I don't really know because I cannot tell the future. But if I can, in the future, I will be making lots of money. Tony Romo is not a franchise quarterback. Boy soccer had an impressive win last week against Corvallis with a score of 2-0. to <laughs> The most important story I have for you today is that water polo is going to state. But the important question is, what is water polo? Is it a sport? Is it just an activity where you swim around and throw balls into a goal? Yes. Does our school even have a water polo team? Well, I'd answer those questions for you, but I'm not paid enough to do that. So, looks like you're on your own, Rebels. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope I remain employed long enough to report to you again. I love you. You know, he might work out. I hope so. I really hope so. Speech and debate. Arguably the most physically demanding activity legally available to high schoolers. Yeah. An activity literally so frustrating that only frustrating people are any good at it. Last weekend, the South Albany speech and debate team competed at Willamette University against teams from all over the state. Sadie Ephraimston and Austin Golstrom ended up winning a very impressive first place in novice parliamentary debate after making the other team from Ashland look like a bunch of fools. Which is pretty impressive, because Ashland's a bunch of cheaters. Anthony Ross and Tyler Whitaker were semi-finalists in senior parliamentary debate and lost out of going to the final round to a team from Ashland. Uh, because Ashland is a bunch of cheaters who actually think they know more about the Chinese economy than you do, but they don't because some kid got up there and was like, oh, 70% of all meat comes from factory farms in China. Anthony, relax. How can I relax when they think that miraculously every Chinese citizen has access to the internet when actually 900 million Chinese citizens don't? It's okay, man. It's over now. <sighs> yeah. You're right. But Kobe Headington did up, end up winning third best speaker overall for public forum debate, which is kind of a big deal. We'll keep you updated on all things debate as the year goes on. Are you talented? Yes. No, not you. It was like a general statement. Oh. Sorry. <sighs> Anyways, now that that pitch is totally ruined, the talent show is coming up pretty soon, and applications for auditions are available in the office. 
That's right, so whether you can sing, dance, or weave a basket in under 15 minutes, make sure you get a sign-up sheet in the office. Starting next week. The Tree of Joy is beginning November 11th. Slips will be delivered to your third period class sometime next week, and the gifts are due December 8th. The food drive is coming up November 9th through the 20th. Make sure you to donate that non-perishable food to your fifth period class because the winning class gets a pizza party. And, like, everyone loves pizza. Except for Michaela Vasquez. Winter Formal is Saturday, December 5th from 8 to 11 p.m. in the gym. You will be voting for court on Wednesday, November 4th during your Pride period. Remember, to be eligible for court, nominees must be in good academic standing and have no unexcused absences. Tickets for the dance will be on sale starting in December and will be available during lunch and after school. Tickets will be $10 each and $11 if bought at the door. As Ryan said earlier, there will be a game tonight at Corvallis High School, the final league game of the season. It's kind of a big deal because if we win, we go to playoffs for the first time in a while. It also gives us a chance to redeem ourselves from that loss again. So if you like winning, come out to the game tonight and support our varsity boys. If you don't, then we'll just assume that you are responsible if we lose. Yeah. That's all we have for you today, South Albany. And remember, kids, the sewer is not a playground. Have a great rest of your day, Rebels. I see you in your Wait, so, let's move this. Wait, stop, I can't. Stop. 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 Stop.